Okay, hey guys, you're watching Downski. This is the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this video, we're gonna jump into Adobe Illustrator. And if you've ever played with Spirograph as a kid, ah, oh, you're gonna love this. This is a ton of fun. And we're going to learn how to create a Spirograph style effect all from scratch in Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump into it. Rightio, so we're now in Illustrator and I've created an artboard that is a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. And the first thing I'm going to do is go over to the toolbar on the left and select the star tool. If you don't see this, just left click and hold where the rectangle tool or the ellipse tool normally is. You'll see this extra menu pop up and you can select the star tool. And with the star tool selected, just click anywhere on the artboard and you get this window pop up where you can specify the settings for your star. Now radius one and radius two essentially allows you to control the length of the innermost or outermost points of your star. And of course, you can set the number of points. I'm gonna be using four. When you're happy, click OK. And there you go, you've got a star. Now with the main selection tool, I'm just gonna scale this up from the corner. Now when you scale, it will probably do this and distort it out of shape. We're gonna hold down shift on the keyboard so it snaps it proportionally and scales up like so. We don't want our shape to distort or skew or anything like that. And I'm just gonna pop this in the center hover over the corner and click to rotate. And if I hold down shift on the keyboard, it will snap the rotation to set increments just so our star is facing this way up. Next, drag over the star to select it. And from the bottom of the toolbar, we're going to click on the color fill, which is currently white, and we'll just set this to none. Next, we'll select the stroke, also known as the outline. And if we select the gradient tool, and then we can navigate over to the properties panel and under gradient select linear as the type. Linear runs from left to right, top to bottom, essentially in a straight line from one direction to another. And we can click on the options icon here to get some more gradient options. Of course, you can see we've got the default black to white gradient. So let's double click on the white swatch and I'm gonna pick uh, blue here instead. And then I'll double click on the black and replace that with magenta. So we have a lovely blue to magenta gradient and I can see from the bottom of the toolbar that it is applied to the stroke. So that is fantastic. I'm going to close down this panel here and I'm just going to increase the stroke weight as well. Now if you don't see any stroke options or you're on an older version of Illustrator, just go to window, down to stroke and just click and then you'll get this window pop up and you can access a few more options there as well. And you can move this panel around, dock it wherever you like, that's absolutely fine. But if you're on the latest version of Illustrator, you'll see all of these options over here in the properties panel. Okay, so we have a star, that's really good. Let's select it by dragging over it and then just press A on the keyboard. Now A is the shortcut for the direct selection tool here. And when we select that, we get these circular anchor points appear around the edges on the inside and the outside. Now what we can do is we can actually hover over these, click on them and drag, and we can use this to quickly and easily round off the corners. But something else we can also do is we can single left click on one and you'll see it becomes thicker. This indicates that it's selected and we can then hover over to some others and holding shift on the keyboard, we can select multiple points. So you can see I've selected these four here where these kind of corners bend in and I can click and drag and you can see I can adjust only those four points and let go. And you can see I've then adjusted that curve without actually affecting the radius of these corners, top, bottom, left and right. So there we go, that's, uh, that's pretty nifty. So what we can do now is select our shape by dragging over it and then from the toolbar on the left, grab the rotate tool. And you can see we have the cyan colored marker in the center. This indicates the point of rotation. So if I left click and drag with the rotate tool, you can see it rotates around that central point. So let's just, uh, let's just undo that and put it back. So what I'm gonna do now is just left click and drag with the rotate tool. And you can see where the rotation is going to happen. But what I can do is while I'm rotating, I can hold down Alt on the keyboard and you can see that my cursor changes to a double arrow. This indicates that when I let go of the mouse, it's going to create a copy. So if I let go, 
you can see I now have a copy and without pressing anything else, depending on whether you're on a Mac or PC, you're going to want to press Command or Control D. That's uh, D for donkey or D for Dansky, whatever you like, Command and Control D. And it will repeat that last action. I love doing this. This is my favorite part and you can gradually see everything come together. And you can repeat this as many times as you like. And now what we can do is select everything by dragging over it. We could scale this up a bit more. You can scale from the center by holding down the Alt key. And remember to hold Shift as well to snap it proportionally. And then with it selected, I can still go and edit the weight of the stroke as well. So I could go and make this thinner. I could make it thicker. It depends entirely on what you're going for. And one last thing I'm going to do is just drag over all of these shapes to select them. And you can do this from the properties panel by clicking on opacity, or if you're on an older version of Illustrator, go to window, down to transparency. Essentially, you want to look for the drop down where it says normal. This opens up the blending modes and we're going to select multiply. And what this does is it will blend all of the colors in these shapes into one another. Oh, there we go. That was fun creating some spirograph style effects all in Adobe Illustrator. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, please do drop them down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.